again. It's good to be back with you and this time I'd like to talk about thermodynamics but in reference to something we pretty much all know about. Right? We all know about refrigerators. Right? What they do? Well, they make things cold. Well, I need a cold drink right now. I'm going to go in my little baby refrigerator down here I've got in my office. Got this. Nice and cold. That's it's just the way we want it. Ready? Ah, uh, got my Diet Burps of Cola. I'm a happy guy. All right, so we like having cold drinks, right? And food that doesn't spoil and stuff like that. So we have refrigerators. Well, how's this thing work? Well, basically it's a box right here and I'm trying to put stuff in the box and then get the heat out of the box so that whatever's left in it gets cold. Take the heat away, what you got left is cold. Right, that's thermal, I guess. Well, there has to be some kind of mechanism to do this and here's what is in the, the typical refrigerator. They're not all like this, but most of them are. So I've got a loop here, a fluid loop, and the fluid is Freon. Freon 134 maybe? I don't know, you guys can check that out. Um, and there's a compressor. Compressor does just what it sounds like. It compresses, uh, increases the density of the, fluid, of the working fluid here, makes it hot. If you smash stuff down, if you compress it, it gets hot. Well, I don't want hot, I want cold. So I've got to get rid of that heat. And what, if you look in the back of a refrigerator, there's this grid of, of black pipes sometimes, and that's a radiator. That's rejecting heat out into the room. In fact, I've, I've got the door closed right now while I shoot this in my office. Between the, the, the uh, LED lights there and that little refrigerator down there, it's staying hot in here right now. So as soon as I'm done, I'm opening that door. And it's be partly because of that heat right there. Well, fluid, now at a high density, and now not so hot, goes through this valve, through the evaporator, and as it evaporates, expands out, gets cold. Well, the second law of thermodynamics says that energy does not, or, uh, does not move spontaneously from cold to hot, it only moves from hot to cold. Well, hot, cold, there goes your heat. All right, that's a refrigerator. And there, like I said, there's a bunch of different kinds and they're all designed differently, but that's an awfully complicated way to explain a refrigerator there's a better way, okay? And that uses thermodynamics. Rather than thinking about valves and evaporators and compressors and things like that, let's think about it in the abstract. Let's think about where the heat's coming from, where it's going, and what work is being done on the way. Well, it's pretty straightforward here. So this is, the refrigerator here is just called a system. Okay, so that's, that's the refrigerator. Okay, heat goes in, goes that way. Okay, and I'll call that Q1 maybe. And Q2. All right, that's the heat that goes in from the food, and that's the, or whatever's in the refrigerator, and that's the heat that goes out, rejected into the room. So if you think about it this way, uh, think about an air conditioner in the summer. You put some food in your refrigerator and then you pay to cool it down. But then you throw the heat into the room and then you pay to cool the room. Well, that's what we do right now. If you're looking for ways to increase the efficiency of the average house, I wonder if that's a way to do it. It might be. Now, to get heat to go from there to there, it isn't going to just do it on its own, right? You need to force it. And that's where the work comes in, okay? Now, that work has to come from somewhere, and what's, what's doing is it's coming from the electricity that goes into the compressor. The compressor is what's doing the mechanical work. I don't know about you, my refrigerator has a plug on the back of it. I'm drawing electricity from the socket in the wall to run the compressor that forces the heat from there to there. So, what that means is, if, let's see, let's, let's try to draw these in widths, maybe kind of show that we proportionally how much heat we're talking about here. Okay, so the, so the width is kind of how much energy or work or how much heat we're talking about. So there's the work going that's running the compressor, there's the heat that's coming out of the, that insulated box. Well, this has to be equal to both of those. Let's try this one more time here. So I'll try to make that twice as wide there. Okay. So what comes out 
on this side of the, the system is the work that goes in plus the, the heat that's coming out of the refrigerator. Now, what we just learned is there's a lot of heat being thrown away, even for one of these little refrigerators. And that's one of the reasons my office is so hot. Um, but now I don't have to think about this in terms of compressors and, and evaporators and temperatures and pressures, all that other kind of stuff. This is nice and tidy. Now I know what's going on. By the way, what I got if, if I reverse that, and actually really reverse the, the widths of these two lines, I went from a refrigerator to a Carnot heat engine. So these very simple diagrams are very powerful. They let you understand uh, whole classes of mechanical systems just like that. Now, can you re design a refrigerator just knowing that? Well, no, you can't. You need to know more things than that. Then you really do need to know about compressors and evaporators and all that kind of thing. But to understand the functioning of the system in its uh, most basic sense, you can do things this way. That's thermodynamics. That's why thermodynamics is powerful. That's why, why uh, guys like me make students, perhaps like you, take thermo even though you hate it. Okay? It's because it's very powerful, it's very valuable, and it, make, it gives you a lot of capabilities you wouldn't have any other way. And you get that because of the abstraction of thermodynamics. The downside, it's abstraction. Okay? And so I, we're, we'll, I'll work with you through this, but you're going to have to come to grips with the abstraction at some point. Alrighty? I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.